Hi, I'm Tony, this is Long Story Short, and it's about to get dark. Or at least it would be. Except that I, like many other people in the United States, live in a city. Specifically, I live in this city. Philadelphia. If you're anything like me, you probably think from time to time, why doesn't it get dark? In fact, why are there so many buildings? Why is everything so ridiculous? 250 years ago, doctors didn't wash their hands before surgery, and now I can walk downstairs, say the number four to someone three times, and they'll give me chicken nuggets, french fries, and a cheeseburger. It's not a paid advertisement, I just do that really often. So. What happened? How did we get here? What makes humans different? Long story short, let's do this. Let's start by talking about a few things that help. I think it's quite obvious that we humans have some pretty serious brains, and we do. Scientists still have a lot of progress to make in understanding how our brains work, but humans do seem to have a very high capacity for intelligence and thought. That being said, there do exist other animals with some serious capacity for intelligence. Dolphins and primates come to mind. Could it be our opposable thumbs, as so many people are quick to point out? Well, it certainly helps. I mean, humans are incredibly dexterous animals with a wide range of motions. We all do take being able to move and grab things for granted, even when most animals can't. Even so, some animals can, and that alone probably didn't do it. Let's try a different approach. In case you couldn't tell from my last video, I'm a bit of a computer guy. When I want to improve a computer's performance, a super useful place to start is looking for something called a bottleneck. Generally speaking, this is some limiting factor that prevents everything else from being used to its fullest potential. So does life have any bottlenecks? I could list a few. But I'm gonna to cut to the chase here. There's a huge one we're all super familiar with, death. Death is one of life's greatest bottlenecks because for most living things on Earth, death is where any progress or advancement ends. Any new tricks an organism learns, if that organism can learn, will be lost to the void when it dies. Sometimes you'll see animals copy each other, but for the most part, if, say, a dog can learn to be the smartest, best dog ever, it will take all that good stuff to its grave when it dies. Then it's gone, and then dog kind doesn't really change. So what's the human secret? Well, I think we beat death, or at least our ideas did. While we've just recently started working on making our bodies more robust, the way humans beat the death bottleneck long ago is so broad, so ingrained in our society, that it surrounds you this very second. You're watching me, and we're communicating. For much of the animal world, communication is limited to gestures, a narrow range of noises, pheromones, and the like. In this way, animals tend to be very good at communicating things that are directly important to them, even if they are somewhat complex. Animals may share a predator's location or information about a food source, their mood, stuff like that. They're not good at communicating outside of these realms, though. Abstract thought, getting general purpose ideas across to other animals, is something that you don't see a lot. Except in humans. Modern humans have been around for about 200,000 years, and while scientists tend to disagree on how and when this happened, we tend to think that humans started talking about 100,000 years ago. Though studies in the past 100 years have shown that some primates can learn some aspect of language, it seems that the only animals that really use language completely are us. We can transfer complex ideas from our brains into someone else's by making noise at them. This is a big deal because it means old people can talk to young people. See where I'm going with this? With the advent of language, oral tradition at least becomes possible. Human history before a few thousand years ago is kind of lost to the void right now. But with the advent of language, village elders could pass their wisdom, the lessons they spent their lives learning, on to other people. Just like that, death doesn't mean your progress is lost. In video game terms, humans learned how to save. 
It wasn't a great solution, though information was still bound to people. People forget and misremember things, and sometimes people die before they get a chance to share with others. Still, the ball was rolling now, and it had to roll for a while. Incremental changes tend to build on each other, so early humans didn't have much to build on. As a result, the next big change didn't happen for a while. At some point, probably within the last 50,000 years, some person or group of people had a revolutionary idea. Find a way to take language and make it physical. Writing, in some form, was born. This advance is the first in a series to really speed up human progress. Now ideas can be stored outside the mind, in a medium that doesn't breathe, doesn't eat, and doesn't have a 100 year expiration date. Written works can be more easily transported and translated and stored. Additionally, now we have the ability to keep track of more stuff in general than we could ever hope to by keeping everything in our heads. By around 10,000 years ago, early written languages were definitely in use in the present day Middle East area. It's no surprise then that some of the earliest modern human civilizations that we have any record of started showing up in this period. Suddenly, we have actual history to work with. Think about that. 190,000 years, the overwhelming majority of human history lost because nobody wrote it down. Now that we're writing things down, we get to lose less. So we keep improving and saving our progress. Civilizations grew with higher levels of complexity and organization. Communication facilitates cooperation after all, and I've already spoken about how important that is. For many years, improvements came in the form of new mediums. We worked on getting away from bulky stone and clay tablets and toward things that are easier to produce, modify, and transport. Fabrics and papers, scrolls and later books. As we improved our writing and its mediums, it became easier to record, store, and transport information. Less is lost. We're saving more often to more reliable formats, and we're sharing those saves with others. Let's keep going. While there are many notable moments in this history, the next huge one is the development of the printing press. It was developed multiple times by multiple people under multiple contexts, but just know this happened within the past thousand years. This doesn't change writing itself, but it changes the accessibility of what writing offers. Suddenly, written language isn't for elders and nobility. I mean, it is, but those privileged or somehow in the know enough to read aren't the only ones who can read. Like I said, literacy was then and still is now spreading, but with the printing press, it became at least possible to distribute written works, save knowledge, to much greater numbers of people. These people now have access to information and culture like never before. With this growing access, so too is there a growing number of people to contribute. More information is saved, less information is lost, and more people are sharing. Let's continue. The telegraph was invented in the past 200 years. Thanks to smart people recording their ideas and building on existing research, a select few with the right technology suddenly had the ability to transfer information across almost any distance almost instantly. You just needed a wired connection. It's worth mentioning at this point that none of the other advancements have slowed down either. Literacy is still rising. More people are getting their hands on books. We're still saving more and faster. Then came radio. Wireless mass communication to anybody with the ability to listen. Go out to sea or on some journey and you can send messages instantly to people back home. The pace quickens. Around this same time, the telephone comes onto the stage and now people can actually speak to each other over great distances. We're already very good at storing ideas. Now we have another way to share them. The pace quickens. Visual mediums are developed, and within the past hundred years, we learned to build boxes that will transmit people, things, anything with picture and sound to as many other people as we want. They just need to have a TV too. So we start building more TVs. The pace quickens. The military in a rapidly developing world with big, scary weapons sees a need for a more robust communication. Specifically, a network for sharing data that can survive if one of its parts succumbs to, well, anything. This network becomes popular first in academic and military circles before slowly finding its way to the public. Within the past 30 years, it goes mainstream. 
data bandwidths are increased, more nodes are added, the reach extends, the pace quickens, and now you can talk to anyone anywhere in the world if they're connected to. You can share art and ideas, you can play games and talk. I mean, we build machines now to think faster than we can because we have the time and knowledge and resources to do so. And suddenly, very suddenly, almost everyone is connected. Now, nothing is lost. Everything is saved. We don't always know how robust the system is, but everyone is invested in keeping it going. And many people are saving copies in many other mediums. Where once upon a time, people lived short, struggle-filled lives, these days we have so many opportunities for the next Einstein or Grace Hopper or anyone else to show us what they've got. And when they do, we'll save it. Like any other exponential iterative process, the change was slow at first. It took humans many, many tens of thousands of years to nail down language. It took many more thousands to figure out writing. But then it took a few thousand to distribute writing better. Then a few hundred to distribute it faster. Then less than a hundred to distribute everything faster. Then it took about 50 to connect the entire world. Like any other exponential process, once it really got going, it happened fast. We take it for granted because most of us were never alive during a time when blistering change wasn't the norm. It's only getting faster though. In the 20 years since I've been alive, I've watched computers shrink from taking up all the space underneath my desk to fitting inside a watch. Now we've created systems where more and more people can contribute whatever it is they've got to the species every day. These days we have trouble sorting what's actually useful sometimes. Sometimes the sprawling system is used for things that aren't great, and we definitely have not solved all our problems. But when I look outside and see what we have accomplished, and how much farther I think we can reasonably go, I'm glad to be humans, and I'm glad to be alive right now. And I'm glad to get to communicate with you, because that is where we humans shine. We communicate, and we cooperate. If I have any good ideas, I'll make sure to share them while I'm still here. I hope you'll do the same. I'm Tony, and this has been Long Story Short. Hey everyone, thank you for watching yet another one of my videos. Uh, this one was really fun to make because it's about a topic that is actually pretty important to me. Um, <laughs> I'm not a communications major just because uh, just because that seemed like the thing to do. This is actually a topic that really interests me and believe it or not is quite important to me. Um, with these videos, I, I really do try to improve the quality of each one. Um, I know this one has a longer script compared to the ones that I've done in the past and I talked about a lot more stuff. Because of that, I really want y'all to let me know if you saw anywhere that I goofed up. I know one area that comes to mind, I did a lot of talking about language in the animal kingdom and I made some really big simplifications. A big part of what I intend to do on this channel is take some pretty big and complex ideas and uh, hammer them down into layman's terms and that can be difficult to do when I'm not necessarily an expert myself. So for that reason, if there is anything in this video that you are an expert on that you feel I didn't do justice, please let me know. I actually, that hasn't happened yet, but when that does, I totally intend to do follow-up videos and stuff like that because, again, this was a pretty complex topic and I'm going to be covering complex topics in the future. And above all else, I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to help other people have fun learning and I'm trying to teach people cool things. On that topic, if you thought this was a cool thing, you like content like this and you want to see more, please like this video and subscribe. Stuff like that is a clear message to me that I should keep on doing what I'm doing, obviously still trying to improve, so it's much appreciated. So yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know if you see anywhere I can improve. If you didn't like the video, you know what to do, but if you did like it, please like and subscribe. I'll talk to you all next week.